breaking the song. All right. Oh. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, gravity <laughs> is working against Adobe. <laughs> and gravity just wants to bring it down. <laughs> Ooh, I'll never know just how this brick composed of mud four inches thick manages to stand up against that weight. <laughs> oh! I'm like an Egypt groupie. Oh, please. He's the Beatles to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you have such a good voice. Whatever. I did it, didn't I? <laughs> Thank you. That's like five tonight. Here's some more. <laughs>
Uh, there are certain calculations that are required in order to achieve some level of accuracy. And uh, so an understanding of these things is kind of, I mean, it's, it's important for what we need, but then you can forget them after this video. How about that? <laughs> Cash me out something? <laughs> <laughs> the first um, term we want to talk about, is, you know, when we talk about nowadays, engineers talk about when they do uh, destructive testing on things, uh, they talk in terms of megapascals and are you going to show them? Yeah. <laughs> Megatons. But a megapascal is nothing more. Mega means million. Pascal is a unit of pressure. One million pieces of pressure or equal to about 145 psi. Well, what's a pascal? That's the next one. You saw these before, right? <laughs> you have to put your hand on it. Oh. What is a pascal? A pascal is a unit of pressure equal to, move your finger, one newton per square meter, but you don't need to know anything beyond that. One Isaac Newton, not mm -hmm. Fig Newton, and not Wayne Newton. And so the question becomes, what's a newton? A newton is a measure of force. It could be any kind of force, moving force. Uh, on Earth, when we're talking about testing this brick, we're talking about the force of gravity on it or its weight. Um, so that's what a Newton is. I am about 210 pounds, which is equal to about 930 some odd Newtons. So just give you an idea. I know what it is. It's that apple poundage in his head. That's a Newton. Actually, one Newton is equal to about this, the weight of a medium sized apple. <gasps> That is that where we got Anyway, I think that's where we went. Yeah. Okay. Now there's another when we talk about pressure, these megapascals can be translated into different uh, you know, units of pressure that you may be more familiar with. One is called a millibar, you know, when we talk about barometric pressure, pressure, atmospheric pressure, millibars. <clears throat> barometric pressure, inches of mer mercury, that kind of stuff from old barometers. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, known as an atmosphere. An atmosphere is one unit of gravity. Um, it's a measure of gravitational force. One megapascal is about 9.8 or 10 atmospheres. So um, if we're talking about something that is that can withstand a pressure of one megapascal. We're talking about something that can withstand about 9.8 or 10 times the force of gravity against it. So that's what that means. And megapascals, this is in large M, large P, and small a. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is above my pay grade. <clears throat> so I have this question mark because he's really confused me. Okay. Well, all you really need to know is that we're going to talk about megapascals and how they translate into PSI or pressure per square, pounds per square inch. So, um, all right. <clears throat> a couple of the tests that we're going to do on the brick. One of them's known as a compressive strength test. We're going to take the brick, put it between two flat surfaces, and apply equal amounts of pressure to it until the brick fails. At the point at which it fails, we're going to measure the amount of pressure that's been uh, forced against it, and that'll tell us the compressive strength of the brick. And we'll, we'll measure it in PSI, but then we'll translate it or convert it to megapascals. Um, tensile strength. Did you... Do you have a question? Well, I was going to say, I know how we're going to test it, but I <clears> wanted <throat> to just stand on it. You can do that. Okay. You want to stand on it first? Here's something you can stand on. Some of these little balls. <clears throat> when we made the brick, we also made several little mud balls. And we That's can use those. I could shot put it. <laughs> <clears throat> we can use those to test the tensile strength of the brick. Tensile strength is the, 
is the is the resistance to being torn apart um, in tension as opposed to compression where it's pushed together. So we'll test that. And the way we'll do that is what we by doing what we call a point test, uh, where we take two points, squeeze them together until the ball fails, measure that uh, pressure, and then of course the antenna and tensile strength. That uh, nice big long calculation for that one. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We want to comply, or at least we want to take advantage of the testing and work that has been done on Adobe Bricks in the past to make sure that we can build a house that'll hold up over the years and, and be a good solid house, not only for us, but for those who come after. And so, you know, th that's the reason we go to this trouble is to figure out and to make sure what the best mixes are. So we can get the best brick uh, and the best construction value out of the home. So uh, we sort of going to follow the uniform building codes as best we can, uniform building codes for Adobe. And they are that bricks must be designed uh, to be stabilized with emulsified asphalt and shall not absorb more than two and a half percent water by weight. And that's based upon the dry weight of a brick. So one of the tests we're going to do besides these two, the third test will be to actually take one of our bricks, weigh it first, while it's dry, soak it in water for 24 hours, and then weigh it again and see if it is absorbed uh, more than 2.5% of its weight. Now remember, we stabilize this brick with asphalt emulsion, so they should hold up well against the, um, the intrusion of water. <clears throat> also, Adobe bricks should not have any more than three shrinkage cracks in a brick and no shrinkage crack should exceed three inches long or be more than a quarter inch deep uh, or I'm sorry a quarter inch wide forgive me um, and then the minimum compressive strength or well, we're talking about this right here minimum compressive strength that a brick uh, should be able to handle is 300 pounds uh, or three uh, psi or about two megapascals. So that's what we're going to be measuring for. And then the average modulus of rupture or tensile strength um, resistance, uh, tensile strength and resistance to rupture must be 50 psi um, with no one individual brick testing less than 35 pounds per square inch. So that's about a half of a megapascal. Um, so um, that's what we're gonna do. Three tests tomorrow morning, lots of fun, uh, <laughs> involving a unique, a unique way of applying that pressure that I hope we'll have fun with. Let's see if it'll record that. Oh. Okay, folks, so our next test is going to be the tensile strength test. I'm just going to try this one using my own body weight. I know my body weight. I can convert it to megapascals. And so I'm just going to put my foot on this ball and see if I can crush it with my own weight. Here we go. Okay, go for it, E-Chippy. Yeah, it wants to move. Oh, oh. oh it started to crush. It did. It's the tensile strength test on this ball. <laughs> it's powder. I already showed you powder, powder, powder. It actually held up under my weight until I sort of bounced a little bit and then it crushed. So I know that it will take at least 210 pounds um, of my weight on it. So now how do we calculate that? What you do is on a sphere like that, you have to take the cross-sectional uh, diameter and then the average cross-sectional diameter and get the radius. So the average cross-sectional diameter of that is about one and three quarter inches on a three and a half inch ball. Um, one and three quarter inches and then you find the radius which is half of that, uh, 0.875, square it, which gives you 0.76, and then um, after you square it, you multiply it by pi, 3.14, which gives you like three something. And then you 
divide that into the number of my pounds, 210, and then divide that number by 145 to give you the megapascals, and it comes out to 0.6 megapascals. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to our world, folks. <laughs> so, six tenths of a megapascal. Now, tensile strength is between 10 and 20% of its compressive strength. So if we go backward on that, um, that's between 10 and five, five and 10 times the compressive strength is uh, to tensile strength. So if this is 0.6 uh, megapascal, 6 tenths of a megapascal, and we multiply that by 10 to get 10 times the strength, um, then we might assume that the, and then do it by five, we might assume that the compressive strength of the brick would be somewhere between uh, three megapascals and six megapascals, which is much more than we need. I mean, we only need about two megapascals. So um, this is a good indicator of where we may be um, in compressive strength, but we still need to do a compressive strength test to be sure. You know, one of the things that I have been concerned about with this soil from the very beginning, and I don't have a microscope to check it, but this soil at contentment is mostly composed of windblown, um, you know, sand and silt and things like that. It's been laid down by saltation, bouncing along, you know, as it was pushed along by wind over time. The issue you have with saltational soils like that is that because when they bounce and skip along the ground over time as they're pushed along, their edges become smooth. Um, and then the soil doesn't hold together as tightly. It doesn't bind together because the little granules are not angular, they're rounded. And so it doesn't tend to hold together as well. And that's one of the fears I have with this soil. And so I'm really anxious to do a compressive test and see where we're at on it. So that'll be next. All right, you're gonna have to hold on tight because that thing will wiggle on you. Okay, robber. Here's test number two. Oh. Robber's turn. Hang on just a second. Okay, it's holding your weight. It's holding your weight. Now, slightly bounce up and down. See if it'll crush. Okay, so it doesn't crush under your weight. It did. It's, there it goes. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I felt it and then it went smoosh. Yeah. Smoosh, smoosh. Okay, so in order for us to get this calculation, we need to know your weight. I'm not saying 120 pounds. Okay. Yeah, right. Get our pretty brick that I made that Egypt's okay, going to destroy. Give me a countdown. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Ah, yeah. it did break! Ow! Oh, it has a little crack though. That's okay, that's normal. Oh! Let's try it again, but let's try it from this. Now, of course, we try it again, we've weakened the brick a little bit. It's like an earthquake happening. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! That's nice. It's oh, it's holding. got a crack right Ooh, there. It's got a good crack. Uh-oh. That's normal. And in fact, they say if it breaks if it breaks into four pieces on the uh, more than four pieces, more than four chunks on the first drop, then it's right on the line. If it doesn't break at all on the first drop, that's perfect. But you can expect this to happen on the second drop because we've already sort of weakened it a little bit. So, there we go. We so have we a good brick. It's already weakened. We have good brick. Okay, okay ready? hold on, hold on. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> oh, no! But we expected it's that. It's like the big bad wolf came and blew our house down. Yeah, I think this brick's going to be just fine. The big bad, big bad wolf blew our house down. It's not super, super strong soil. It's... It has just enough clay in it. I guess when we actually make really, really, really brick, real bricks, will we make sure that all the measurements are better? Because you know we just like, oh here, let's pour some, let's pour some of this emulsified stuff in here just till it looks right. Yeah, of course we'll have to tweak it and make sure that everything's right. So then it should be better brick then. 
when we start building brick, we'll have to test some, we'll have to test it as we go to make sure that we've got good brick. Because what'll happen is, you know, if moisture gets in this stuff, and that's important to stabilize it, because if moisture gets in it, it'll do what's called blooming. It'll literally swell from the moisture. Yeah, but you know what though? But you have to remember that these got wet too, hit sitting on the porch. Well, they got oh, damp, but then they dried out. I mean, you yeah, know. but that but, doesn't. And also, one thing to keep in mind about adobe is that a little bit of humidity is not that bad for them. Um, they say that adobe brick holds up better at about sixty percent humidity than less humidity. I guess the extra bit of moisture in the brick helps hold it together a little better, but. So I think overall we did a decent job. I mean, we got mostly uniform consistency throughout the brick. Um, there was no need, there's no need to add temper to it because, you know, it doesn't appear to be pulling apart so easily and cracking as it dries. Okay, folks, here is another test. And this involves um, how much moisture uh, this adobe brick will set up. Now you remember that we um, made this adobe, we mixed in emulsified asphalt with the with the mix to stabilize it. And so now here's how we test that stabilization to make sure it's good and find out if we need to add more asphalt or something like that. First we weigh the specimen, get the dry weight on it. We got 16.8 ounces as you can see. Okay, 16.8 16.8 ounces, okay? Then we'll take this specimen, drop it in water. And this is just how a building inspector will do it. Uh, he will take a sample adobe brick and he will drop it. He'll mark it so that he knows it's the one he chose. He'll drop it in water. He'll come back in 24 hours and weigh it again. Uh, either that or break it in half and see how much moisture it is absorbed to see uh, how much moisture it's taken up and how strong it is. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave this in here for 24 hours, come back and see how it turns out, weigh it again. It's been less than a minute, and uh, you'll see that this ball is literally flaking apart um, from the water. And you see pieces of it coming off and settling in the bottom of the pan. That's not the greatest sign. Um, tells us that we do not have nearly enough stabilization in this and the fact that this stuff is flaking in the way away uh, the way it is I mean tells me also that our clay content is a little low I just uh, not happy but it seems clear that we're gonna have to add in the actual mix we're gonna do some more testing and actually add a whole bunch more emulsified asphalt to this mix to stabilize these bricks as best we can all right, folks, it's been about five minutes, and I can tell this is, <laughs> this is a total failure. Uh, you can see parts just falling right off <laughs> into the water. This whole thing's going to, this thing will be nothing but a layer of mud uh, within a couple of hours. So, um, epic failure on the uh, stabilization testing. So.